Hi everyone. Um, over a year ago, I started a project. And today I am announcing that the project is done. Um, and this is my video about it all. Full disclaimer, I do know that this army that I built is full of, was in real life full of bad guys. They, they were Nazis, but there you go. We are playing a game with literal Nazis in it. So don't, don't tell me that they were evil. I know. Okay. Right. We are going to see my army project. Just a sec. I made a PowerPoint. There we go. I build a new army. I build UPA Axis Partisans, and I will talk you through the whole process. So the, the, the thing that got me started was I was fed up with painting khaki. I have been painting my Brits like forever. I have a huge British army and it, it just, it's so much, it's all of it, eight army. So it's all of it, this desert yellow khaki stuff. And I was fed up with it. And one thing I really wanted to do, but that I hadn't really got a chance to do was to paint horses. I love painting horses. Let me just show you. <coughs> Sorry about that. Drop my mini. <coughs> Sorry about that. Just a sec. Let me just show you this one. Uh, don't know if you can see that. I need to go out and see what you can see right now. Right. So this here is one of my Reconquest games. Saga Norman Knights. Right. I freaking love painting horses for some reason. And I'm okay-ish at it. So I, I really wanted to paint some more horses because I was fed up with painting khaki and and just washing it down and it it wasn't good and my my british army which is my main tournament army is not well painted at all so so i started looking around and i found this one dude the picture on your left which is an axis power cossack and i was like wait a sec cossacks they were riding horses weren't they um and he's got blue trousers and a red hat. Yes. And I knew nothing about the Cossacks and the Axis powers at all. I knew that some of them fought for the Axis powers. But that was basically it. And this, by the way, was before um, Case Blue came out. I didn't even I didn't even um, have any idea that that Cossacks were going to be a thing in Case Blue. It happened to become that, but. Uh, for me, I was like, okay, so who can I play that? And I wanted to build a lot of Cossacks. So I, I thought about maybe building a Soviet army. But at that point, Simon Brecken had already painted up a Soviet army for me. And that was naval infantry. So blue, which I love. I fucking love that army as well. But I didn't want to build another Soviet army. Um, so... So I looked at the Axis powers, and at that point, before Case Blue, the the cavalry for for Germans was not really a thing. So I was like, and I I really like like minor details of history sometimes, and I I stumbled over Ukrainians, maybe also because of the whole Ukraine war, um, and and Russians always claiming that the Ukrainians are Nazis and. And looking back through history, well, there there is something, not that Putin is right at all, but but there is something where you can go back and say, well, the the Ukrainian nationalists, the uh, UPA, the Banderas um, of World War Two, they they were Axis allied, or they 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 at least did some horrible things to Poles and to to Jews. And they fought against the Soviets and they fought against the Axis powers at one point as well. They fought everyone. And I was like, yeah, 
I can fight everyone. That's great. So I found some pictures. There are not a lot of images of these um, these dudes. And I read some about them um, to try and have some sort of idea of what I was going to represent. And I quickly found that um, the only way to represent this was be a, a partisan army that would basically be able to fight both the Soviets and the Germans and would have equipment from both of these groups as well. Um, so my thought experiment would be that what had happened if, because they actually tried to do this, the Ukrainians uh, under Bandera, they, they approached the Nazis in, in Germany. They approached Hitler and said, well, do you want to support us? And Hitler, having considered this for a bit, said, no, you're untermensch. Um, and he didn't support them. And he actually jailed the Ukrainian uh, leadership, Bandera. And... And then Ukraine fell into basically a, a very long civil war that took into the 50s. So my thought experiment would be, what if the Nazis had actually supported the UPA, the Ukrainian People's Army, um, to fight against the Soviets? And that was my idea. Because a lot of Cossacks from the Ukrainian area had actually signed up because they, they didn't really didn't like the Soviets. So they signed up to fight for the Germans. Um, most of them ended up in, um, in the Balkans fighting there. But a lot of them also fought on the Eastern Front. So my thought was, well, these Cossacks might actually have gone into the Ukrainian UPA if that was an Axis army, if that became like the sort of army of, of uh, collaborative uh, Ukrainian nationalism. Um, so, yeah. And then I just I started finding images of that. I, I mean, I found a lot of different uh, images and I started, started looking around at what I thought I would need for this. So for my cavalry, I knew that the way to go would be to get myself a pack or two of the uh, Perry Miniatures um, American Civil War cavalry. Luckily, I already had a pack of those. I bought myself a second pack. I also had a pack of Perry Miniatures duck so Deutsche Afrika, uh, uh, Afrika Corps. And they also were a huge help because they gave me German uniforms and German equipment. So both of these I started cutting up. That, that was my starting point. Um, then I looked at War Games Atlantic Partisans. Unfortunately, these are French Partisans. So they didn't really look the part. But I thought, you know what? With a little bit of help from, from a, some kit bashing and maybe some Soviet kits and maybe some some German kits, I might make something of it. So I bought myself two packs of War Games Atlantic Partisans and a single pack of War Games uh, Atlantic German Sentries because I also wanted to have more German equipment. Finally, I just scrounged bits from Soviet, German, even American bits, um, especially many of the American arms from the American army, um, like the starter army, because um, a lot of them had left arms that were not holding a weapon. That was very useful for my cavalry. Um, so I just scrounged bits and bobs. So almost all, no, every single miniature in this list is a kit bash of all of these. Um, and at the same time, I started messing around with how to build a slightly competitive list, a list that I could take to pick up games and I wouldn't like embarrass myself massively. And also a list that I maybe could take to a tournament. Um, so I was thinking that I needed um, maybe two units of pistol armed, inexperienced dudes. What I term pistoleros, because that's basically what they are. They are guys running around with pistols and they go into close combat. Um, so that would mean that I had to build 20 to 40 pistoleros-ish. At the same time, I really wanted to paint a lot of horses. So I needed to 
I needed to build all those horses, and I also needed to learn how to play cavalry in bold action. I didn't know that, um, although I had friends who could teach me. Um, so, and, and for me, that meant that I had to build a, approximately 20 plus cavalrymen. I thought maybe I needed my HQ to be on horses as well so that they would become more survivable. I could like move them away from danger and stuff. So 20 plus, that would be two units of cavalry plus the HQ. Yeah. I also felt like um, potentially SMT armed troops, like veterans with SMGs could be a thing because uh, the... the uh, Partisan list is fairly limited in what it can deliver. So I would have to have a unit for me of SMGs, um, potentially with a little bit more German equipment, because these would be my veterans or like like my, my hardcore unit. So they would need a little bit more uniforms and stuff, helmets. I would also need a bunch of riflemen, I thought, because um, if you look at the partisan list, Riflemen, riflemen units like um, late war partisans. That's the place where you get access to Panzerfausts, and I knew I wanted a, at least a couple of Panzerfausts. So, and as soon as I thought that, well, Panzerfaust would be a thing. And uh, Panzerfaust, I didn't ri really want to equip my my dudes with Panzerfausts, so I knew I wanted them to be magnetic, so I could take them on or off the model. So, like, have a couple of my riflemen who potentially had a magnet somewhere in them, so I could stick a Panzerfaust onto it. It was, it would stay there. So, and I could pull it off once it's shot. I knew I wanted to do that, and then, of course, I needed a full complement of teams and artillery and all of that. So, a lot of stuff. Most of the teams and artillery I knew I could build just from kid bashing stuff because like what is a sniper he's a dude with a rifle potentially he has a, a loader with a pair of binoculars or whatever um that's a that's a sniper right what is an uh, artilleryman it's an a man in a uniform that's loading a gun um so all of that could be built i knew but i also knew that i wanted that Cossack head. So what I did was I approached a 3D printer, uh, a guy who has license to print a lot of, of the STL files online, and I asked him, could you print me Cossack heads? And I want the specific Cossack head. I found some that I really liked. They were unfortunately Soviet, but <coughs> the star could just be filed off their hats. And voila, <coughs> with a German uniform, <coughs> and a pair of American Civil War legs. There you go. So here you can see the process. I have the American Civil War horses um, with the legs as well. I have the dark bodies with American Civil War sabers because I couldn't find any Cossack sabers. And who cares anyway? Why are you looking at my sabers that closely? Um, so they're in German uniform, so the uniform very much looks like what I saw in my initial picture. And then the heads are 3D prints um, from, from I think it's, oh, I can't remember the manufacturer, they're online somewhere. Um, and I just, I printed like 40 Cossack heads. Um, more than I needed for my cavalry, and that would mean I also had some left over, left over for my infantry if I wanted some of them to have Cossack hats, which I really wanted. The work, because of I had to have stuff pre 3D printed, I was waiting for the War Games Atlantic stuff, so I started out working with what I had, and that was the box of American Civil War horses, so I painted up the horses, and you can see them here. They turned out nicely. Um, I then cut up my duck and put the bodies on from what I have here. Here you can see with the duck bodies before I cut off the heads. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, you might just be able to spot it here. And already at this point, I was like, this horse, this is going to be my officer. So I, and this horse is going to be his helper. Um, 
I also took a bunch of excess rifles and SMGs and, and I painted those up so that I could glue them down to the horses so that my cavalry would actually carry the, the weapons that they would be needing if they had to go on foot. That's where I started. Then my Wargames Atlantic partisans came and I started cutting up plastic. This is one of my favorite processes as well. <coughs> I needed a bunch of pistols though. So many pistols. So I took all the pistols that I had from the American Civil War. So you can actually see one guy here holding a uh, Colt revolver. Um, I took all the pistols that was in the partisan pack. I took all the pistols I could find from the American uh, Americans um, army pack as well. I, I, I scrounged all the pistols I could get everywhere. And I just started putting them together. And I favored the, the soft floppy hats here, which I had seen in some of the pictures of partisans on, on the uh, Eastern Front. So some of the Ukrainian partisans actually had that hat on. So I, I favored those. Um, or heads without a hat. Or I even gave some of them a fur cap. This one guy here has a fur, like a, like a Soviet style um, cap. And, um, and I just started gluing men together. I started mostly uh, gluing the, um, the pistoleros, but you can already see here I've taken, I've taken a um, bazooka from my, uh, my American kit. Because when you're playing partisans, you have a bazooka. Of course, these being Axis partisans, um, the, the likelihood would be that they had not a bazooka, but a pentasrake. But it's very similar. So I was like, OK, whatever. I'm building a bazooka. If at some point I need to run it as a pentasrake, I will run it as a pentasrake. And then. Then I needed to do a little modeling. Because partisans have got three bombs that you deploy after deployment. You set them down on the table. There are areas that you've booby trapped. So I I did a little bit of sculpting here. And you can see here, this here was a cap from a bottle or something that sort of, when it, it lays down like this, looks like mine. So I painted it up like a mine. I put it down here. I, I set a wire over to this bit here, which looks like a clock. You can't really see it on this image here, but it looks like a clock. There's like a measuring gauge or whatever. So it looks like someone has tripwired that uh, mine there and put it down behind a little bit of rubble. Um, so that was the first bomb. The second bomb here was old school. I, uh, I wanted a, a bunch of dynamite with a fuse running through, out of it. So that was um, like uh, five short sticks of wood, round um, round wood, that I just glued together, put a, uh, a piece of string into it, and then we were, I was ready to go. This, by the way, is uh, green stuff that I've made um, like different textures of rubble or like um, um, masonry because I wanted my army to be not in rural setting. I had painted so much desert by this point. I'd also painted my, my Czechoslovakians. They were in a forest, so they had like like bits of wood and leaves and what have you. I wanted something different, so I th thought, well, let them be fighting in somewhere in Ukraine, in the city, in Kyiv. Um, so I, I made these urban textures. The final uh, bomb is over here, which was a bit I took, I think, from a space marine and cut off. And um, it really looks like a, uh, a bomb where I, I put down a little bit of wire here as well and put it behind this trash bin. Um, that's at least how I painted it up in a minute. So that was the modeling that I did for my bombs. I'm really proud of those. Um, and then I started painting. And you can see here how the bombs turned out. You can see here the measuring gauge for my uh, mine. And 
And here there's a trash can. I, I emphasized the trash can a little bit. I even put a, uh, a poster here or a uh, painting of a very famous mustachioed gentleman from World War II. Um, that is going to get blown up as soon as this explodes. That was that was fun. I uh, and here you have the um, the dynamite with the fuse running to it. I did a little bit of um, of fire painting here, where you do you do the brightest where it's it's close to the source, and then it turns darker as you go. Um, and here you can also see. I try to keep my my uh, my my units here in in two basic colors, three, a bluish gray um, and a lighter gray, and then a this color here, which is a brownish, um, a yellowish brown. So we have the, the, the light gray here, we have the bluish gray, and then the yellowish, gray, uh, yellowish brown. That was the colors. So, what was the painting process? Well, I started by priming all my models. I primed them white. Then I lay down uh, some base coats. So I base coated each of the colors that you saw in this picture. So, and I would pick out random bits of them to say, okay, this bit is going to be that color. So here in the background, you can see one guy who has the, the light uh, gray color as his shirt. And uh, this guy has the blue gray color as his jacket, but they both got the uh, yellowish brown as their trousers. So I would pick out different versions and combinations of this, um, making sure that every time I had a German helmet, I would do the gray color because I wanted that to be a grayish, steelish, but not steel color. Then I would wash them down with uh, different washes. So for the browns, I would use a brown wash. For the blues, I would use a blue wash or a black wash. Um, and then I would recoat, so painting every color back on and do highlights. Um, the airbrush for my vehicles here, I don't actually own an airbrush, but these vehicles are old toy cars, which I had stripped down the paint of. And then um, David, he helped me airbrush them uh, up with the base colors. And then I did all the paint work with the brushes myself. So painting in the blacks and the uh, yellows and the whites and the stripes along the cars, all of that. Um, <clears throat> so there, there are, there's one thing that I want to notice here, and, and you can see this on this car here. There are two ways that I paint white. Either I do it from blue gray or from brown. Um, each of them gives a different color and I would try to make sure that if I had anything white that needed to go on a model, um, I would do the opposite of what was around it. So for instance, this car here had a warm-ish green brown color. That meant that the white color going into the tires here, I wanted that to be cold. So I did from gray, bluish gray, and until white. So successive layers of highlights going up towards that white. That's how I always paint white, um, either from brown or from blue. <clears throat> and you can see this here. You can see the base colors. You can see how I've randomly picked out these colors. Um, most of the uniforms, I gave this grayish color, but no, no, actually, you know what? I think I gave more than half of them the uh, the brown, yellow brown over here. Um, the yellow brown actually it has a little bit of green in it, so it was these two colors mostly uh, combined: commando green and hemp rope. Whereas the um, the blues were were crystal blue and dungeon gray with a little bit of black sometimes added. Um, and then here you can see the washes. And here you can also see I've started work on the bases. I did a couple of test bases. So these here are the test bases. One was very dark. I washed it down with black. 
Um, one was lighter, and I actually ended up liking that one. I know it's it's very 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 orangey and, and vivid, and I'll I'll explain my reasons for it, for doing this in a minute. But here you can see the end results of the bases. I think they stand up a little a little clearer against the black here. Um, this was the uh, the the final result. I wanted something yellow orangey um, as my base. And I will explain why in a sec. Um, so that was the next bit I, I worked on. And you can see I worked a lot here with a foam core that I had cut up into square shapes. So to, to look like bricks um, that I would s sort of s scatter around. And some bases I even gave a little bit of work with some green stuff to make it into um, brick roads. And some I would just like sand down. Here you can see me working on the highlights. Um, so highlighting a red stripe down his trousers here and getting the white up on the eagle on this uniform here. These pictures are not excessively clear, are they? <laughs> but yeah, you can see that I've, I've reapplied the base color and then here you can see like stripes along the sleeves here which is me giving, and I usually do, I, I mix up a little bit of off-white into the base color um, until I'm satisfied that, that it stands out enough. And then I apply this lighter color to the base colors. And I do, the, I, I use the same off-white for almost all the colors, not the blue ones, but almost all the colors, like the grayish and the um, yellow brown ones use the same color. Beige. Now, the bases and a display board because I knew I wanted a display board. I wanted this to be able to. I wanted to be able to put this down on on a painting competition and and not be ashamed of what I did. Now, I, as a child, I was a huge fan of the Blueberry cartoon, like the cartoon with the uh, the um, cowboy hero Blueberry. And you can see an image up here. And if you look at that desert, that desert has a very monochrome look, right? It has red and yellow in the background. Um, and there's like patches of blue in the sky and stuff. But the desert itself is not painted out with details. There's not like green on every single plant. It has a very monochrome look. That was actually what I wanted to go for. Why? Because it makes the the actual figure itself, this this character, Blueberry, riding in the front here, he stands out more. So I wanted my bases and my display board to be a background, but not actively destroy the minis and the painting of the minis themselves. And I know that this is not to everyone's taste. A lot of you will be saying like, this doesn't look realistic at all. Yeah, okay, um, true. I don't care. This is how I wanted it to look. So you can see here, I'm building up my display board. This is also going to be my, my movement tray. Um, so I've, I've laid down some cobbles here. I've uh, put some, some fencing in. I've laid down some rubble as well. Started painting it all up here. I've added some posters and some newspapers, which I also added to the bases, by the way. Um, just to break up the the, um, the monotone a little bit of that yellow orange stuff, um, break it up a little bit mm, with some other stuff going on, some texture basically. Um, and all of this was was me finding old newspapers from the nineteen forties and and thirties uh, in Russian and Ukrainian, and just printing them out in the right scale. Um, the posters are all either German or Soviet, uh, again, because I wanted there to be a little bit of mix. So, and here is the finished project. I'm going to try and show you here because I have it right beside me. Here we go, just a sec. Now, I'm 
I'm going to turn it a little bit down so you better can can see better. But here it is in all its whoa glory. I need to move all of my shit here a little bit. I don't know if you can see this. Right. right. So, this is the display board, by the way. I have put down here, along the edge, I've, um, I've put down a little bit of history. So, there is some, some of the what if that that uh, I actually use, like, um, I've written down stuff, what, what would have happened. Because I'm a, um, I don't know how many of you know this, but I'm a historian by trade. So dealing in what if history is actually like, not that off for me. So what would have happened had Hitler supported Bandera and, and the Ukrainians. And you can see here, basically, that that is my cavalry. Right there in all their freaking glory love my cavalry love them to bits and down here woo, you can see yeah, these move because because they are still toy vehicles right you can see the the three vehicles that i got painted up here this one is actually a um it's got a an image of a ukrainian cossack beer from the 1940s and 50s, I think, on it. So it's it's a beer wagon that they've enlisted. For this one, I made a pintle mounted MMG from a German MMG that I painted up and I magnetized so they can go on or off as I need it. I uh, made a um, telephone post for the display board and I printed and painted a Ukrainian flag and for those of you who don't know this but yeah yep yeah, that is actually a World War II Ukrainian flag from the UPA it's not a modern day Ukrainian flag the uh, the red is the blood and the black is the soil that uh, of, of Ukraine in the fight against the Soviets because they didn't really care about Nazis and stuff they they really wanted to get rid of Stalin and over here, you can see in all their glory, my Hilfspolizei, um, the story I'm telling about these guys is that, and this actually happened, a little bit of it anyway, um, the UPA infiltrated the Ukrainian police force uh, in massive numbers to get access to weapons. Uh, of course, mostly that was the service pistols, so hence the pistols. Um, and when the time came for the uprising against the Soviets and uh, and against the Germans, by the way, um, the Ukrainian police force actually were, were some of the guys who fought um, against the Soviets and the, um, the Germans. They were also, by the way, the, the guys who did all the atrocities against Polish and Jewish people. So uh, not good guys, which is why I've given them an SS officer in front here. I don't know how good, how well you can see him. I painted little SS runes on his jacket and everything. Looks like a right evil dude. Um, so I painted up a bunch of these pistoleros, right? Oh, goddamn bunch of them. So that is that is my full display board in all its glory. Now I actually made more than can fit on this display board right now because this is all the minis I painted, all all of them um, that I'm showing you today, not just the ones I've taken to tournaments. Oh, and by the way, if you guys didn't notice. There are my three bombs. I'm still excessively proud of those. <laughs> right. Because I needed to paint so many models that they didn't actually all fit on my display board when I was done. So here are the rest of them. There. There we go. Here are the rest of them. I've got my group of 
and and these I actually I ended up making more of than than um, I had intended to start with because I ended up going to a tournament where I needed a huge unit of SMG people. So these are my SMG arm veterans. They've got more helmets and more Cossack hats and stuff. So they they are a little more blingy um, than than the other guys. Here in the middle, I have my regulars again with more German uniforms than my inexperienced police force. They got rifles. Then I have my small teams. We've got a sniper team here lying down. These are from both from the Deutsche Afrika Corps. One of them had a rifle. The other I gave a um, pair of binoculars. And then the bazooka team here. Come on, focus. God damn it. Yeah. To help draw whatever I needed, because I also I, I had to have a, a gun at some point. I had a uh, mule and a horse-drawn limber. This limber, by the way, is a British Napoleonic limber that I just painted up in the colors that I was using. I also painted up a a flamethrower team and here at the back is my artillery crew so there are like a spotter with a radio there are extra men there's a mortar here this mortar by the way is scratch build um oh and let me just show you one thing that i am very proud of So, I have these two dudes, right? They're carrying Panzerfausts. And the Panzerfausts are magnetic. Brilliant. Um, I'm even more proud, and this is this is a funny little detail. This is this is nerding out in the extreme. Um, what I did was I, I had some um, plastic Panzerfausts from I think a German kit, maybe a Soviet one. And I, I cut off the the actual Panzerfaust rod, so it doesn't really now have the the extra bits that a Panzerfaust would have. But I replaced it with a metal rod, so that it so that it could magnetize right. And then I just screwed a magnet into the back of this dude. I don't think you can even see it anymore, but it's right there. Uh, maybe you can see it a little bit if you really want to look. It's right right underneath his, his rifle. Now, then I was like, I'm going to do something. And I, I went online and I found the image of the instructions that were actually on the Panzerfausts. So so on each, the, the head of each Panzerfaust, there was an instruction package in German of, on how to use it, because these were issued to like Volkssturm and whatever. Um, I found that. I scaled it down and scaled it down and scaled it down. And you know what? It's right there. It's right there. You can't even see it. It's so goddamn small. But I, on each of my Panzerfausts, there are the instructions, the actual instructions that was on Panzerfausts. Yeah. Uh, very, very satisfying. The end of this project was that I took it to a tournament this fall, uh, Bring Your Guns, which... The the experiment was sort of a success and then sort of not completely. Um, what I found out was I needed to train more using the, um, the partisans. I couldn't just pick up an army and go to a tournament and win it because I was good. I needed to train with that army. Especially I needed, I think, to train with the cavalry. That, that wasn't... Um... But I got a lot of good comments about my my minis. Unfortunately, I've forgotten my display board, so I couldn't even, like... But there you go. Um, it was really a fun project, and it's the first time I've, I've thought out a project from start to finish, and then at the end brought it to a tournament, displayed it for everyone, and, and played it. Um, so, that was a really, really nice project, and... I just wanted to show you one more detail that I, I got. And this was actually a guy who gave this to me. But if you can see that, I got a bunch of 
um, resin, like bottles of beer and bottles of wine and stuff. And some of them I broke and, and just scattered around as if someone had broken bottles. But then this guy, he's got a bunch of bottles standing here. Um, so there, and I printed little, <laughs> again, weird, I know, but I printed miniature, um, like beer, um, etiquettes and stuff, put them on there so you can see that it's a beer bottle. Weird, I know, but that was what I did. That was the project. And I am so happy about that army. I think I'm going to play it not because it's highly competitive, it's it's okay-ish. Um, I think I could do something with Partisans. Um, will I bring it to the WTC? Maybe not. Um, but I might. I'll definitely bring it to to army uh, to to um, to other tournaments. That will happen. I just I need to practice more with it. That's it. And thank you all for tuning in to my uh, conclusion of my hobby project, building a UPA army. Cheers.